Worldwide, billions of people smoke. Smoking-related diseases, including heart disease, stroke, chronic lung disease, cancer of the lungs, larynx, esophagus, mouth, and bladder, cause four million deaths globally. For the majority of smokers, both the physically and psychologically addictive nature of tobacco products makes quitting difficult. Part of nicotine's hold on smokers is believed to be due to its effect on brain dopamine levels, which are associated with positive feelings. Knowledge of the receptor activated by nicotine provides helpful insights in the development of new smoking cessation strategies to help people finally quit smoking. Let's take a look at how this process works. When inhaled, cigarette smoke travels through the airways to the lungs. From here, nicotine passes directly through the alveolar epithelium into the bloodstream. Although nicotine can interact with a variety of receptors in numerous tissues, as we will see, it is its interaction with specific receptors in the brain that creates the dependence associated with smoking. Within seconds, nicotine is delivered to millions of neurons in the central nervous system. Here, within the midbrain, nicotine interacts with the alpha-4, beta-2 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Acetylcholine is the natural ligand for these receptors. However, nicotine, also an acetylcholine receptor agonist, has a higher affinity for the alpha-4 beta-2 receptors. Located on postsynaptic neurons, these receptors are comprised of two alpha-4 and three beta-2 subunits that form a channel for transporting ions through the membrane. When two molecules of nicotine or another ligand engage binding sites within the receptor, the ion channel is activated. Looking into the receptor, we see that it is closed, but activation by ligand triggers internal rods to open the channel for the passage of calcium, sodium, and potassium ions. This initiates electrical impulses, generating an action potential. This signal is rapidly transmitted down the axon to the reward area of the brain. Here, the impulses stimulate the release of neurotransmitters, including dopamine. Dopamine triggers additional signaling events that stimulate the reward circuit, generating short-lived feelings of well-being, improved mood, and increased attention. Every time tobacco is used, dopamine levels surge. However, nicotine is eliminated rather rapidly causing dopamine levels to decline. The result, a craving for more nicotine. With continued tobacco use, alpha-4, beta-2 nicotinic receptors undergo complex adaptive changes, including upregulation and desensitization. Over time, these and other downstream changes contribute to a stronger need for nicotinic stimulation to achieve the rewards of smoking. In summary, the frequent use of tobacco products creates an increased need for more dopamine, continuing the devastating cycle of tobacco dependence. Bereniclin, an exciting new drug for smoking cessation, may help people finally overcome their tobacco dependence. Nicotine produces its effects by acting as an agonist at the alpha-4, beta-2 nicotinic acetylcholine receptors resulting in a surge in brain dopamine levels. When nicotine is absent, the resulting low levels of dopamine may cause the withdrawal symptoms of craving, anxiety, and emotional upset that can lead to smoking relapse. Bereniclin has higher affinity for alpha-4, beta-2 receptors than nicotine, but bereniclin differs by acting as a partial agonist. Therefore, when bound to the alpha-4, beta-2 receptor, Bereniclin triggers a reduced dopamine response than nicotine. The result, a moderate but sustained release of dopamine. These lower levels of dopamine may help reduce nicotine craving without triggering the rewards brought about by tobacco use. Additionally, should relapse smoking occur, bereniclin competitively prevents nicotine from binding to the alpha-4 beta-2 receptor. By shielding the smoker from the rewarding effects of nicotine, 
Berenicline may provide additional benefit towards successful cessation. As we have seen, Berenicline has the potential to relieve the craving and some of the withdrawal symptoms associated with quitting smoking without itself being rewarding or addictive, while also reducing rewards if a person does relapse. This mechanism distinguishes Varenicolin as a new and exciting addition to the anti-smoking treatment armamentarium. Champix is indicated for smoking cessation in adults. The most frequently reported adverse events, greater than 10% with Champix, were nausea, headache, insomnia, and abnormal dreams. The onset of the adverse reactions was generally in the first week of therapy, and the severity was generally mild to moderate. Patients who cannot tolerate adverse effects of Champix may have the dose lowered temporarily or permanently. For patients with moderate or severe renal impairment, dose adjustment with Champix is recommended. Champix is not recommended in patients with end-stage renal disease. No data exist on the efficacy of an additional 12 weeks of Champix for patients who do not stop smoking during the initial therapy or who relapse after treatment. Champix is not recommended for use in patients under 18 years of age due to insufficient data. Champix has not been studied in pregnant or nursing women and therefore should not be used in these populations. Because smoking cessation with or without pharmacotherapy has been associated with the exacerbation of underlying psychiatric illness, for example depression, care should be taken in patients with a history of psychiatric illness and patients should be advised accordingly. Because elderly patients are more likely to have decreased renal function, prescribers should consider the renal status of an elderly patient. Champix may cause dizziness and somnolence, and therefore may have a minor or moderate influence on the ability to drive and use machines. Safety and efficacy of Champix in combination with other smoking cessation therapies have not been studied. Smoking cessation with or without treatment with Champix may alter the pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics of some drugs for which dosage adjustment may be necessary. In patients with severe renal impairment, the concomitant use of cimetidine and varenicline should be avoided.